So all Thursday morning, I was busy pretty much staying as offline as possible, putting together my notes and final information to construct my 6800 XT review video, which at this rate, I'm worried I'm never going to get done. Anyways, though, I noticed a few comments when I checked my YouTube channel talking about something going on with NVIDIA's answer to mining cards and how, for some reason, what I said didn't come true. And sure enough, I looked into it and, well, I saw what I can only describe as the most anti-PC gamer release I've seen in my entire life, right? My video I put out this week going over misconceptions in mining was about what can be done to help gamers, as I will show in this clip from the very beginning of the video. I, I just feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about what's going on with mining and why and, and what options AMD and NVIDIA have to try to prevent miners from getting it versus gamers. So you see, my point wasn't what's impossible. My point was what is possible that will help gamers. I wasn't talking about things NVIDIA or AMD could do that would actually hurt gamers, which is what NVIDIA's decided to do. You see, a major focus of that video was talking about how the majority of cards used for mining go to these multi-billion dollar companies and many, many multi-million dollar companies that have the funding and resources to hire their own people to flash their, their own custom BIOSes onto cards, to modify things down to the firmware level of the card. They can hire ex-NVIDIA and AMD employees. These people have a lot of money. So if you were to try to nerf performance in mining at the driver level, you're really only hurting retail gamers gamers who right now are mining while they're not gaming to make the best of a shitty situation that they didn't take a part in creating they said i need to get a graphics card i wish it didn't cost more but at least i can make up for it now mining except now nvidia supposedly is going to take that away from us as well and i actually want to go over some more things about this because this is far worse than I think a lot of people realize, which the good news is it seems like a lot of the mainstream tech press, like on WCCF Tech, does realize how this is not good for gamers. But, well, let me get into it. So the first thing to talk about, which was a major focus of that video from this week, was how NVIDIA is not going to make custom silicon for graphics cards that will be used for mining, right? It costs hundreds of millions of dollars to make each die. They're not going to waste it on something that might not even exist as a form of business anymore in a year, right? This almost made AMD go bankrupt in 2014 when 290Xs flooded the market when they made too many of them. And if that's already a risk, making a card that can only be used for mining is an even greater risk. It's not going to happen. Now, if you look at what's going on on their press release, you can see this is clearly GA-102, GA-104, and GA-106 dies. And Usman points out on WCCF Tech that the numbers are worse than what you see for the desktop gaming card. So maybe it's because, you know, these are worse yields. But I would actually say that there's a good chance that it is just what NVIDIA says. They are lower voltage, lower clocks. It may not show in the TDP, but they may actually be more optimized, efficient cards that don't need to be tweaked after every few months because their stable clock rates are going down. I think these are just lower clocks meant to run more efficiently for a very long time without the need for tweaking. At least I think that's what we should assume could be true until third-party testing is done. Right, which, which is to say this, these are not cards that were never going to go to gamers anyways, right? No. These are potential 3080s, 3070s, and 3060 Ti's that you will no longer be able to buy. They are now being sold directly to mining firms or, and this is where it gets much, much worse, to people who maybe just wanted to have a handful of graphics cards heat their house over this cold winter right now nvidia can make a mining only card 
that you have to buy from them. And I'm sure they will charge extra for it. These aren't going to be the MSRP of Ampere graphics cards. They're going to be far more than that. So now if you just want to heat your house, you have to pay NVIDIA extra. And if you're a gamer that was hoping to make back some money this year, you're not going to anymore. At least not enough. And the worst part about this also is something I talked about in my video earlier this week. At the very least, what we can say is this. People buying up all these cards will probably flood the market in about a year when Ethereum's price collapses next time. Now, maybe not, right? Now, maybe there won't be this buy-up of the gaming cards that at least makes it so you can go to eBay a year from now and get last-gen cards for dirt cheap, right? The 1070s that were sold for like $600 or more during the 2018 mining boom, eventually they flooded eBay a year later for $100. And yeah, I mean, it's not an ideal situation, but it did allow some fantastic budget options. There were also, you know, like $150 Vega 56s around a year ago as well that I thought were a phenomenal budget option like we had never seen before. To me, it seems like NVIDIA is now taking this away from us as well. And I'm honestly starting to get worried, right, that PC gaming is just going to die at a certain point because... I don't know. I don't know what else to say. You know, Nvidia, like they did with their ultimate play that I outlined last year, is trying to have their cake and eat it too. It's not enough that their sales are up because you can use their cards for mining. They now have to also make extra money from the people using it to mine and make sure miners can't. I mean, gamers can't make any money back. They're just double fucking everybody. Just like they did last year when they lied about when their launch release was and sold their cards directly to miners first because AMD hadn't launched their cards yet. And what really scares me is how many people I see in the comments that this goes over their head, that they think NVIDIA is actually helping them because that is how NVIDIA is spinning it. They are spinning it like this is a pro gamer move. And my channel came under siege by people who took NVIDIA's side when they fucked you last year as well. Make no mistake. NVIDIA is playing the market in more ways than I would argue is necessary again. And like I said in my Ultimate Play article late last year, a part of me can't help but be impressed by how good they are at playing it. And I think most people will just buy into it anyways and let it keep happening. But I don't know. For those who listen, hopefully, hopefully you learn. And I know a lot of you do see what's going on. And I, I don't know. I don't have a positive way to end this video. I'm trying to think of a way to except saying it's just them playing the market from both ends again, just like last year. And I wonder how many people see through it and how many people just attack people like me reporting the news and trying to get the facts out there instead of realizing what's going on again. Well, Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really don't think I have much else to say. WCCF Tech did a great write-up on it that I will put in the description. I also have links in the description to, of course, other things I looked up making this video as well. If you want to support Free Thought and people who don't just chill companies, please consider supporting Moore's Laws Dead on Patreon. We put out exclusive ad-free content every week to our patrons because that is the only way this stays a profitable small business. And otherwise, to everyone else, Thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Please share. Please ring the bell button. And uh, I hope to see you again. All right. Bye, everybody. Peace.